Hi everyone, welcome to this intro to Coda.io video. I just wanted to kind of walk you through uh, what Coda is at a very high level and some resources that you can check out on your own if you want to learn more about Coda. So I got, I started using Coda uh, about a month or so ago and I actually participated in their early beta and they came out of stealth mode a few months ago. And if I had to pick a way to describe Coda, it's basically like Google Docs meets Excel meets Tableau meets uh, Trello. I know it's like a bunch of different tools into one, but it really is all those different tools in one kind of document slash spreadsheet slash project management software. So if you don't have Coda yet, if you're still on the wait list, you'll probably just get a page like this. I mean, as a matter of fact, you will get this page. And it basically is kind of like the intro to what Coda is, and it talks about why docs and sheets um, are kind of archaic, and why Coda is a new way of integrating all your docs and sheets into one. And um, yeah, so if you were interested, just sign up on the, the, the email wait list, and hopefully you'll get in. But I wanted to kind of show you what it looks like uh, from the user's point of view once you are into the, the tool. So I'm just going to share my other window here. And here we go. So there we go. OK, so if you are on the wait, on the um, whitelist, you're, you're going to get your coda will look like this, with it, which just shows all your documents. Surprisingly, I found out you can't actually edit the same Coda doc in two different browsers. It doesn't support that yet. Kind of like when Google Docs, you can have like two windows open. I don't know why you would, but you could have one browser open with one Coda doc or one Google doc, and then the, another browser open with the same Google doc. You can't do that yet in Coda. But I wanted to show you kind of the basics of what Coda looks like. And so this is essentially all Coda is. It's just like an empty document, right? Pretty much like Google Docs. But there's some really cool things you can do here, and I'll go into this in more detail in future videos. But for now, I just want to kind of show you what Coda is. And you know, you can just type things like you normally would in a Google document, a Google Doc or a Word Doc, you know, hello, we are presenting a demo of Coda. And you can do things like making it a header, a, a subheader. You know, all of bold and actually let's get rid of this header now. You can bold things, italicize things, just like any regular document. You can also have a lot of emojis, which is kind of cool. Let's actually try to insert like a, an emoji there. And actually what happened here was notice how I when I typed in coda.io, it automatically showed me the hyperlink. And when you hover over the link, it automatically shows you kind of a preview of what the um, what the doc what the website is, so that's kind of a cool little feature, and I mean you can do any kind of website too. Let's try to do something like ESPN, for instance. I always use ESPN as like a test like website to see if my internet works, and yeah, it kind of like spells out the, um, the website title, and you can hover over it, and it kind of gives you a, a preview of what the link is. I actually don't really like the way that it kind of automatically spells out the entire website. Sometimes I want to keep the actual URL intact, but um, you know that's neither here nor there. But this small thing about Coda. Uh, so what are some things that you can do here? So the main thing that you do in Coda, the first thing you do is create a table. And this is if you're like an any Excel person, you'll know this right off the top of your head. But the, the key thing about tables is that they're not like a typical A1, B1 cell reference, right? And also, you have to label your table. So I'm going to call this one my first table. So you notice how you have column 1, column 2, column 3, then row 1, 2, 3. This isn't like, uh, you, this isn't like C1, row 1. And this isn't like C2, row 2. Like, you couldn't reference this. And it, you can't call this like, uh, you know, B2, C3, whatever. Essentially, the tables in Coda are, are similar to Excel, but the difference is that you have to treat them more like a database. So these column names, I actually have to give them actual header names to make them interesting. So this could be like customer ID, this could be customer name, and this could be, let's say, 
lo location. And I'll get into more what tables are and how you can use them. But for now, I just kind of want to show you that you don't reference a table or the cells within a table by going like, this is A1, this is B1, this is, in a traditional Excel mode, this would be uh, C2, right? Since this is like A, B, C, and row two. So that's kind of an interesting thing to note about coda tables, but they do prove to be very powerful once you get into them. And I'll show that in a future video. A few other things that you can't do is row level calculations. So for instance, if I add another column here, I'm just going to add another number column. Notice how there's a number here. Let's say this is price. Let's say this is quantity, right? And this is just making it up. And this would be uh, this would be total sales, for instance, right? Let's say we have one price. Actually, the price should be in dollar format. So I'm going to change this to a currency. And format will be, yep, currency, that's fine. And this will be, let's say this is 10, this is 20, this is 30, quantity 5, 7, 9. So what's interesting is that when you create a formula on a table in Coda, it applies the entire column. It doesn't just do it one cell by one cell. This is something they like to get used to doing um, in Coda versus Excel. So if you want to do this, you can't actually click on the column reference. You actually just type out the column that you want to do. So just because I want to do price times quantity. And notice how it just multiplies it out entirely for you, and you can't change individual cells without changing the entire column. And we'll get, I'll get more into this in a future video, but just something to keep in mind is that this is one of the biggest, I think, roadblocks for Excel users is that, you, you know, especially when you are doing date formats. Um, I'm trying to think of an example here. So for instance, let's, let me share my window now to, to go to Excel for, for a second. All right, let's share my Excel window here. OK, so you know how sometimes in Excel, you can, let's say I had price, quantity, total sales. And this is, let's make it up, 10, 20, 30, 5, 7, 9. Let me increase this so you can see it. You could easily do this times that, and that's your, uh, oops, oops. So you have this, the price times the quantity, you get your total sales. And you have to drag your formula down to actually fill the formula to, to do the rest of the rows, right? Um, that's fine, you can do that in Coda too, but what I'm talking about in Coda, which you can't do from what I know, is sometimes you have specific date formats you want to do. So let's say you know that this date has to be 2, 12, then this one has to, this date right here has to be that plus seven days. Now, I haven't figured out a way to do that in Coda just yet, but I think especially if you're doing any kind of date manipulation where each row has to be a different date, that might be a little trickier to do in Coda. And this goes to show that Coda is not necessarily meant for heavy financial modelers or Excel modelers. I think it's much more for the user who wants to present data and present um, kind of uh, data visualizations in a much more cleaner and structured way. So I'm going to go back to sharing my Coda doc window. And just a few more things before I get in, before I wrap this video up in terms of how Coda works. One thing I like about code is that you notice that when you insert a table, you have to add new rows and columns on its own. And the reason why that's interesting is because there are no wasted rows or columns. Right? Because these are exactly what you have to work with. And if you want to add more rows, you have to physically click the plus button to add matter in terms of usability or memory or what have you. So you notice when you go create a new Google Sheet like so, it's a blank new canvas and it looks just like Excel, right? But the problem is usually you end up only using the first like four or five columns for a simple table, and maybe only the first 100 rows. And what happens is Google Sheets automatically gives you a thousand rows to play with, and then also A through Z for columns. 
sometimes I end up deleting like columns E through Z and then also rows like 25 and below because in reality, most of my sheets are pretty small. And when you have additional rows and columns, it might actually make the Google Sheet load slower. Because think about it, you have a, a, a bunch of additional columns and rows that Google Sheets has to open in the browser and it just kind of slows things down if only if your data just happens to be just like in the first few cells right here, right? So the one thing I do like about Coda is that the tables are very compact and you don't have, and you have to manually add in new columns and rows. Um, so I think that has to do with like just giving some more quicker load times and usability for, for tables. Um, but also gives you this idea that like, tables should not just be like huge Excel files and sheets where there's a million rows and columns. So that's a really cool thing about Coda and a very simple design pattern that allows uh, you to save kind of space on the spreadsheet, if you will, with the table. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete this table and do a really simple import from Excel. So I, I'll quickly show you what my Excel looks like right here. Because um, what I think what Coda is trying to do is make it easy for you to copy and paste from Excel into Coda or even import from Excel into Coda. So I created a really simple table here. I'm just going to delete my initial uh, price quantity thing. And I created this table kind of to show the different things I wanted to talk about in my, my Coda intro videos. And you notice I have a few basic columns like what the Coda features I want to talk about. I mean, bold these so you know what the column headers are. I have the Coda feature, blog, do I want to do a blog post? Yes. There's going to be a YouTube video, set to true. So notice I have a mixture of text, of true, falsy kind of columns, date columns. And also, when you're using Excel, a lot of times I, I do things like no, yes, yes, no, and I'll do like an N or Y. So I'm going to copy this table from Excel. Copy. I'm going to put this into Coda. And I'll just quickly share, reshare my screen to, to show the, what looks like in Coda now. Hold on one second. And so this is what it looks like when you copy and paste uh, right into, into Coda. What's really cool is that my first, let me call this my first table again. What's really cool is that Coda automatically knows what the column headers are. It knows how to put in data, obviously, and also knows um, that my YouTube video, if you remember, I had put it as a true false column. And Coda automatically has this column format that's with a check mark. And that's, that's essentially the same thing as true and false in terms of uh, the Coda environment. But what's kind of tricky, which is um, not necessarily a bug, but I guess it could be like a feature that we'd like to see, is that if you notice with content and content done and published, these were two columns in my Excel file that I have specifically set to no, N and Y for no, no, yes, so on and so forth, right? By default, that turns it into a text column. Notice how that T there pops up showing text, and the format column shows it as text, right? Whereas the YouTube video, since it was true, false, Coda automatically translated that into a checkbox, which is kind of their version, again, of true, false. So what if I want to turn this column this content done column or this published published column into true false. There's no simple way of doing that from what I can tell. So if I wanted to change this to a yes, I would have to manually type in a yes. This would have to be a yes or no, for instance. And then it does it loses that kind of true false uh, column format. What I try to do is if I go here, go to format column, and then change the text format to uh, checkbox, right? You notice Coda throws me this error. That little um, red arrow says cannot convert value to the specified format. And that's because yes, yes, no does not translate into true, false yet in Coda. I'm sure this might be maybe a feature down the road. But what happens here is if I do, so if I start playing around this a little more, if I delete the yeses and the nos, or the delete the ys and the ends, I get a blank column. But then it turns into a checkbox all of a sudden. Because remember, I changed this column format to a checkbox. So now if I check this box off, it's, ba it's basically in a true-false format. But again, you kind of saw how it was a little tricky because I had to convert 
the column format to a true false, and I had to, to delete the value that I had originally, and then come and then check the box off. So it's not exactly the most ideal way to convert your column into uh, into Coda format for true and false. So there's a few things about tables in Coda that you have to be wary of in order to make sure that columns have the right format. And I'll get more into playing with tables in my next video, but for now, I just wanted to show what a table looks like in Coda. Basic things about the columns, about true, false, and also about the interface. And also here, I didn't talk about this, was there's a whole like really cool way of organizing your Coda docs. It's kind of like uh, sheets in your Excel file, but you can segment them by section by these uh, by these folders. These are like I have this training folder, a raw data folder, and I'll do these in more tutorials. But you also have sections, and these are all different sections within your Coda doc. So that's kind of it for um, for my first video about Coda, Intro to Coda. Additional documentation I think would be really interesting for you to check out is. Coda has a really, really great tutorial section called coda.io slash learn. And I actually went through all these tutorials. They're really helpful for understanding how to use Coda, how to use tables, grouping, layouts, controls. And I'll get into all this stuff in future videos in terms of how I found them useful for my own Coda doc documents. And Coda also has a really cool gallery, which I think is still in its infancy, but it basically gives you basic templates of using uh, Coda for like if you do a product launch, if you do an event tracker, if you have like a new hire checklist of things you want new employees in your company to go through. You have these really cool templates to help you try um, using Coda in different ways. I would say uh, getting to use them initially were a little tough without using, understanding how Coda works. So I highly recommend going through the tutorial first. Um, but the, from after that, it'll kind of you'll kind of see the power of Coda and. Uh, yeah, additionally, I also found a few YouTube channels that were really helpful. One of the main ones is um, Tom Moore. Uh, he has a YouTube channel, check him out. He's already done a few Coda uh, YouTube videos, tutorials about how he uses Coda and different features. And hopefully my videos will be as good as his, but um, I'm still learning how to do my tutorials myself. So uh, definitely props to Tom for making really awesome Coda videos. And you can also check out the Welcome to Coda video. I don't think you can hear the audio here. But um, interestingly, the Coda video is unlisted, which means that it's not like searchable, I guess, or it's not on their main YouTube channel. I guess they don't really have a YouTube channel yet, do they? Let's take a look. Yeah, the channel doesn't have any content yet, but you can access the Coda intro video, I believe, by just looking, by Googling Welcome to Coda, or YouTubing Welcome to Coda, rather. So, that's basically the first video. Um, my next video will get a little more into tables, the features that you can do in them, and um, some quirks, nuances, some things I would like to see. But uh, hopefully you found this tutorial useful. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave some comments below. Thanks.